coming up in this episode. Where to start when you have decided to stay in Denmark for a longer period? Practical information like how to find a place to live, where you can learn the Danish language, and what to know about the royal family of Denmark. Hi, I'm Julie, and I will be your host for today's show, episode 3 on mydenmarktv.com. <laughs> Did you know that it's quite normal to see Danish politicians ride a bicycle to work? Yes, that's true. In your country, it may be impossible, but here in Denmark, it's quite normal that people see politicians or famous actors without bodyguard or limo. And many foreigners find this admirable, and so do we. If you are coming to Denmark to work or to study, of course, you need to find accommodation. Most universities or colleges do have their own housing services or affiliations with a network of organizations that provide housing services. So you may want to check with them and apply for a youth apartment if possible. For students to search for a room, a studio or an apartment, please click on ungdomsbolia.dk. There are also other websites that you can search for an apartment before you come to Denmark. These websites are in English. Scandiahousing.com, housingdenmark.com, expatriates.com. Well, you can also place an ad here. And please remember, the most important thing is to have a place when you arrive. And if you don't like it, you can always change it later on. Today we are going to talk about the Danish royal family. Do you know that the Danish monarchy is the oldest continuous monarchy in Europe? Well, it is. The Danish royal family consists of Her Majesty Queen Margaret II and her family. She is married to Prince Consort Henrik and together they have two children. The Crown Prince Frederick and the Prince Joachim. The Crown Prince Frederick is married to the Crown Princess Mary and together they had two adorable children, Prince Christian and the Princess Isabella. Prince Joachim was previously married to the Countess Alexandra and together they had two children, Prince Nikolai and Prince Felix. Now he is remarried to the Princess Maria and the Princess just gave birth to a boy last month. Well, he's so cute. A big congratulations to Prince Joachim and the Princess Maria. Well, that's an overview of the Danish royal family. Last week, we introduced you to the Danish language. This week, we're going to guide you in finding places where you can study the Danish language. If you are in Copenhagen area, you can choose a language school like Studio School or just another local language center like IA or language center in Hillerup and another language center in Copenhagen. Now, let's just go to Studio School and see if we can catch some students there. Well, now I'm standing here in front of studio school where you can learn to study, um, where you can learn to speak Danish. And I'm here with... Sophia. Sophia. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Um, can you please tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from and how long have you been living here in Denmark? Well, I'm from Greece and uh, I've been living here for two years now. And I started on the course about a year and a half ago. Okay. And it's been quite an experience learning Danish. I think I really enjoyed it, I would say. Okay, so what is the most difficult part about the Danish language? Well, I think if any, ask anyone, everybody will say it's the pronunciation. Okay. I think without a doubt. So, unless you come from Germany, maybe, or, yeah. Okay. But I would say that's the most difficult part, yeah. Okay. Do you have any fun experience with the, the Danish language? Yeah, well, you know, you try to say East and then people think you're saying cheese. You know, oh. that's the whole thing with the pronunciation, so. How's about, um, uh, what's this called now? Roy Gold Yeah, you that's say right. That? Yeah, no, and I won't try. <laughs> okay. But that's what everybody, you know, every Danish that you meet, they always say, oh, try and say that. It's very fascinating for them, apparently. Okay. 
So do you have any advices for foreigners who come here and want to study Danish? Uh, well, I've always uh, enjoyed learning a foreign language, so you have to like it. And then if you don't, uh, just try to make the most of it, because I think it's the most important thing in uh, moving to a new country. Okay. You have to speak the language, I think it's like the most important thing. I can't, uh, you know. Okay. So here we stand in, um, I'm standing here with another student from studio school. So can you please tell me your name? Yeah, my name is Gauri Pandey. And uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from India. India. Yeah. So how long have you been living in Denmark? I'm here since around one year. Okay. And then you have studied in Danish for one year? Or just uh, a couple of months? About uh, seven, eight months. Seven, eight months. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what, what do you um, think about the Danish language? It's definitely a difficult language. Okay. And it's different from um, the language, my mother tongue. Yes. And uh, it is different in the sense that um, uh, it is language with stresses. And, yeah. Uh, there are stresses on certain words in a sentence. Yeah. And if there is a whole sentence, there is stress on say five important words. Okay. In that whole sentence, yeah. So do you have any fun experience that um, you can share with us about the language? Not a funny experience, but um, I just find it interesting that uh, some words are pronounced different in the other language, but the same okay. word is pronounced differently in Danish. Okay. For example, if um, in English M A D is mad. And yeah. in Danish, M-A-D is mal. Mal. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> can, can you say roi <laughs> kroi It's a special Danish dessert, you know, the most Danes would love to test foreigners in saying this. And trust me, I have a hard time of learning it myself. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for your time and yeah. um, have a great night in your class. And thank you for yeah, having no us out. Yeah. Okay, thanks. thanks. Bye. Well, Kerry, thank you for joining us. Um, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Well, like, how long have you been living in Denmark? I've been living here for three years. Three years, yeah. okay. And how long have you studied to speak uh, Danish? Uh, about two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your experience with it? Uh, I've enjoyed it. It's been hard, so it's been two nights, two evenings. Okay. I've, uh, every Monday and Wednesday for the last two and a half years. Okay. For three, uh, uh, three hours yeah. each, each night, each evening. So it's been hard. So but I've now finished. This is my last. So this is the pronunciation that you the find difficult. The pronunciation is very, uh, pronunciation is very okay. difficult. The grammar is pretty straightforward. Okay. The pronunciation is the, the hardest part. Okay. Yeah. So do you have the chance to practice, you know, Danish a lot? I have a Danish wife. Okay. And I have a Danish daughter, so I okay. get to practice them. Okay, that's and, good. Uh, I find if, if you speak Danish to Danish people, sometimes they tend to speak Danish back to you, okay. if they can understand you. Okay. <laughs> so, it was the last interview with a foreigner about the Danish language. Uh, if you want to study Danish, please remember to sign up early because there is normally a waiting list. In the last two episodes, we have shown you many different places that you can explore in Copenhagen. This week, we're going to talk about other things like good places to eat, just to introduce you what Copenhagen has to offer. Here's one website for you to check out. It's called AOK.DK. AOK stands for Ed om Copenhagen, which means all about Copenhagen. On the website, you can search any information about entertainment in Copenhagen, like restaurants, clubs that you can hang out at night, or just fun stuff that you can do with your kids too. However, most of the information on the website is still in Danish, but ALK has begun to provide information in English as well, so you can definitely expect more to come from ALK. Talking about good places to eat, we have three places that we would like to recommend to you. The first one is Indian Palace. Vanamir and his wife love to come here. And well, Vanamir is the guy standing behind the camera. Their Indian food is really one of the best. The second place that we would like to recommend is Sachi Sushi Restaurant. I and some friends went there um, yesterday and I can assure you, they sell one of the best sushi in town with a very reasonable price. The third place that we would like to recommend is a very trendy Vietnamese restaurant. It's called Le Le, right on Vestable Girl. If you want to experience some modern Vietnamese food, this is definitely a place for you to go. Well, that's all for now. Next week, we're going to have a special edition where we will talk about Danish food. So, look forward to it. Otherwise, 
thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed the show and see you next time bye bye now i'm going over there to buy some french cheese Now you should take a picture of this girl. <laughs>